How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to solve Amazon's 2020 most asked interview question. The problem is called reorder data in log files and it's a string based problem. This question has been asked at Amazon over 330 times just within the past six months. And this is just what's reported on the LeetCode platform. I'm sure this number is much higher. So if you're planning to interview at Amazon anytime soon, definitely watch this video all the way through just in case you get this problem. So for this problem, we are given a list of logs where each log is a string. A log can be of two types. It can be a letter log or a digit log. A letter log consists of only lowercase letters. So this would be an example of a letter log. The very first part of the log is the unique identifier. And then everything after that identifier is the actual log portion and all of those letters will be lowercase letters. As for a digit log, it consists of only digits and just like before, the first part is a unique identifier and then everything after the identifier is the actual log portion where it only consists of digits. The identifiers in both a letter log and digit log can contain both lowercase letters and digits. So we need to sort these logs based on the following rules. The first rule is any letter log will come before a digit log. Second, letter logs are ordered lexicographically, which is not including the identifier. Third, when letter logs are the same, then we sort by the identifier portion lexicographically. And then finally, digit logs should always be put in their original order according to their indices. Now that we understand the rules for sorting, let's go through an example. So we can have three different cases when we're sorting. The first case is we have two letter logs. So let's say we have log one and log two. In this example, log one would come before log two, ignoring the identifiers because art zero is lexicographically less than own kit dog. However, if we look at another example, log one and log two, in this example, log two would come before log one because both logs have the same letters, leet and code. So what that means is we have to compare the unique identifiers lexicographically. Let two is less than let three, so log two would come before log one. In the second case, we would have one letter log and one digit log. So let's say we have log one and log two. In this example, log one must come before log two since it is a letter log and letter logs always come before digit logs. And then the last and final case is we have two digit logs. So let's say we have log one and log two, but in this scenario, log one, is at index four in our array. Log two is at index two in our array. In this example, log two would come before log one since it has a smaller index than log one. Now that we've seen all different possible cases, we need to know how to check if it is a letter log or a digit log. So let's say we have the following log. What we can do is we can split by the very first space in this string. When we split by this space, the first part will be our unique identifier, and the second part will be the actual log portion. Now, all we need to do to check if it is a letter log is we take this log portion and we look at the very first character in this string. If that character is a digit, then we know it's a digit log. If it's not, then we know it's a letter log. Okay, let's implement the code for this solution. I'm gonna have the rules somewhere on the screen so that you can easily follow along. So we are given an array of strings, which are all of the logs, and we need to return an array of strings, which is the sorted logs based on the rules that they've provided. So to sort, all we need to do is we can say arrays.sort of our logs, and then we're gonna pass a lambda function in here. We can say log one, log two, and then this is where we are going to implement the actual sorting logic. So this lambda function is taking the place of a comparator class. So this is prevalent in really any language. So I could say log one is less than log two. That would mean I return a negative number. If I were to say log one is equal to log two, then I return a zero, and then finally, if log one is greater than log two, then I return a positive number. So using this logic, this is how we're going to implement those rules. So the first thing we need to do is we need to extract the identifiers of both of our logs and then the individual log portion. So to do that, we need to get the first space in that string. So to do that, we can say int index one, we'll say log one, 
dot index of the space and this will grab the very first one. So even if there's 50 other spaces in our string, it'll always get the index of the very first one. And now we just need to compute the substring. So we can say string, we'll say id1 equals log1 dot substring from zero up to index one. And then we can say string, we'll call this the main portion, so we'll call it main one, log1 dot substring from index one plus one. So this is splitting up the string based on the identifier and the log portion. And now we get to perform the same exact logic for log two. And now that we have both strings separated, we need to determine if the logs are letter logs or not. So we can come down here, we'll say boolean is digit one. So this is gonna check if log one is a digit and we'll go to main one, and we're just checking the very first character. So we can say char at zero, and if we come over here, we'll say character dot is digit. So if we know that the very first character is a digit, then we know the rest of the log must contain all digits. If the character is not a digit, then we know it must be a letter log. Once again, we're gonna perform the same logic for log two. So now we just need to complete the logic for the rule. So the first case is if both of them are letter logs. So we're going to come down here, we're going to say if not is digit one and not is digit two, then we need to compare by the main strings. So we'll say int value is equal to main one compared to main two. However, keep in mind if these main strings are the same, then that means we need to compare by identifier. So we have to have an extra check here. We'll say if our value, if it's equal to zero, that means they were equal, and that means we need to compare by the identifiers. So we'll say id1 compared to id2. So this will handle this following rule so we can X that out. If this is not true, then that means main one and main two were not the same. And all we need to do is return the value and that handles that rule. So now outside of this if statement, this is where we're going to handle the rest of the rules. We know that there must be at least one digit log at this point. So we can say return if log one is a digit. So if digit one and if log two is a digit, then if both of them are digits, we just want to leave them in the exact same order so we can just return zero. In this scenario, we are pretty much saying don't touch them at all, leave them in the exact positions that they already are. So that handles that rule. If is digit two is false, meaning that log two is a letter log, letter logs always come before digit logs. So that means that log one would be greater than log two, so we'd return one. And then if that whole thing evaluates to false, meaning that log one is actually a letter log, then we return negative one because log one would be less than log two. And so that handles the rest of the rules. And then finally, when we come out of this sorting, we just need to return our logs. So let's make sure the solution works. What? What the fu Oop, I used the wrong character for the lambda function. This needs to be a dash. Let's submit again. So the time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n times log of n, where n is the number of logs that we have inside of our input array. Under the hood, arrays.sort in Java utilizes a dual pivot quick sort algorithm, and this is specific to primitives. So because we are sorting by strings, it uses quick sort, and quick sort on average will be n times log of n. And then as for our space complexity, it's going to be big O of log of n for the recursive calls that it makes. Even if you implemented quicksort yourself under the hood and you tried to use an iterative algorithm to implement it, you would still have to utilize a stack. So that is it for this video. If you found it useful, definitely consider liking and subscribing. I post videos just like this every single week going over leak code solutions, and I plan to do a lot more videos, including projects and whatnot. And definitely let me know in the comments if you like the structures of the videos. I've been doing fully animated examples, which obviously takes a lot of work to do, but I feel like it's easier to understand the problem that way. So that is all I have for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.